Hi, good morning. Welcome to the sports review segment of Breakfast Daily. My name is Nathan Kwa. Good morning, Freeman. Good morning, Kweku. How are we doing? Good morning, Pretty Nathan. Good. We all right. How yeah. are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all right. I'm all right. Thank you. Thank you for asking. And let's let's start off with some athletics. And uh, the World Athletics Championship will start in the United States on Friday. And Team Ghana has put out um, the squad that will be Ooh. representing the country this Friday in the United States. Now, there are about seven athletes. Benjamin Azamati, Joseph Polamwa, Deborah Aqua, Alexa Mankwa, all in the team. Sean Safuentri and Joseph Odru, all of them are in the team. And they'll be taking part in the women's long jump. That's when Deborah Aqua will be jumping. The men will take part in the sprint, 100, 200, the relays as well. And then Alexa Mankwa will be Ghana's sole participant in the men's 800 meter event. So, um, that team has been put together. They'll be accompanied by officials of the Ghana Athletics um, Association and then the head of delegation. So they are all preparing to fly to the United States. They get in there, they get ready, and the competition starts on Friday. It's happening in uh, Eugene in the state, uh, Eugene in Oregon in the United States. That's where uh, the World Athletics Championship is happening from Friday to 24th of July. And uh, we will see how the team fares um, already the media is gathering. I have, you know, a few friends who are there, you know, eager to see people running up and down, jumping, throwing and all of that in the World Athletics Championship in the United States. So we wish Team Ghana the very best. How many officials are going with them anyway? Do we know? Uh, there are about, about five of them. About five of them. Impressive. About five, yeah, about five or four. Mm. Two, I do know that the president of the Ghana Athletics Association is going. Mm -hmm. I know that the general secretary is going. And then there's the head of delegation. So three officials. And then they have two coaches and seven um, athletes. So that's the number. I that's think good. it's fair. It's fair. Very small, manageable it's number. Exactly. Unlike some of the obscene numbers you've seen. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what's happened. Seems well, like I, I think it's just... Over time, they've learned to be disciplined. To be honest, the Ghana Athletics Association, over time, has managed to be a bit more disciplined than the other associations. It's a small contingent. Why mm -hmm. do you want to add more and more and more people? Yeah. And for the first time in ages, there isn't even anybody that I know from the ministry. Of course, the head of delegation. I'm here to find out where that person belongs, but there's a head of delegation, two officials, and then two coaches, and then the rest of the team athletes. So. Mm. That that, sense. I, I more so, I think more so when, for example, the World Athletics um, Federation is, um, or they call it the um, Athletics World. It's kind of they are kind of sponsoring everybody there. The last thing you want is to present a large team. They'll start to ask questions. So present a small manageable team. They take care of your flights in out. They mm. sort out your accommodation. Mm. And then I think it's standard really. If your team is small, bring a small team. And we get on with it. The mm. countries with the larger teams, they will know how to handle themselves. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's move on. Let's do some CAF Awards news. Now, the CAF Awards will happen um, later this month, not too long from now. And Ghana's Kamal Din Suleimana, he's made the final shortlist for the CAF Young Player of the Year Award. It was a very long list, about 10, 11 people. Yesterday, they announced the, sh the final shortlist of about five. And Kamal Din has made it there. He's oh, there with wow. Dango Watara of Burkina Faso, uh, Karim Konati of Côte d'Ivoire, uh, Papi Matassa of um, Senegal, and Hannibal Mejbri of uh, Tunisia. So these are the players who will be vying for that particular award. And the, uh, the event is happening on the 21st of July in Rabat in Morocco. Mm. So which Kamal Din, the very best. He's the only Ghanaian to have made any kind of shortlist in this year's CAF Award. So wish him the very best. We hope he wins yeah. and makes and all of us very proud. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats to him. Yeah. Congrats to him. Congrats to him. He's had a very decent season uh, in Rennes. Joined them from North Island. Had a good f start. A bit of injury, but mm. he managed to break into the Black Stars team. Helped the team qualify for the World Cup. Played in the AFCON. So, um, Kamadin has had a good start to life in the big time when it comes to football. Uh, let's move on. Let's do some women's Euros. And now, guys, remember yesterday I was talking about the game between England and Norway? Yeah. When they yep. were exchanging words, mm -hmm. no, you are under pressure. No, you are the yeah. favorite. Yeah. No, I'm the underdog. Well, it looks like England took things very personally. And mm -hmm. yesterday they absolutely destroyed Norway mm -hmm. by eight goals to zero what? in that encounter <laughs> that was played. <laughs> At the Amex Stadium, home of Brighton. What were the Norwegians but, doing? Yeah. So the Norwegians started the game very <laughs> slowly. By the time they realized, they were six 0 down after the first half, my, and England oh added my. two more later. Eight? So goes from yeah eight. Beth Mead of Arsenal, she scored three. Georgia Stanway 
Ellen White, Lauren Hemp, and Alessia Russo added the other goals for England, who put out a brilliant performance for the Lionesses as mm. they won by mm -hmm. eight goals to zero. No, wow. You know, it's, it's one thing to lose, it's another to lose <laughs> embarrassingly, yes, you know. Yes, I mean, it was a complete eight? massacre. It was a complete massacre. Ouch. Complete massacre. The English were on point. They were, it was just brilliant from them from start to finish. Especially in that first half, they were rampant, scored six goals. The Norwegians didn't even know what to do in that encounter and they oh. lost that goal, that, that game, sorry, by eight goals to zero. So, England have made it to the quarterfinals of the Euros. They've won two of their three games. They've made it to the last eight. Norway will have to recover and hope that they can win their final group game and join England in the last eight. But it was a horrible night, really. No, but this kind of ICU recovery, it will be very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> you know? well, you, you, look, it's, you've lost eight there. It's okay. You get it out of your system and try to win your final game. But it's, it's a quite yeah, bad. Yeah, but it's a, kind of, it's a kind of... I don't envy the coach at all because it's a kind of game that... You can't. You, can't. you can't. You don't have a response. Everything yeah. you do is not working. That's a go. Yeah, still scoring. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes uh, uh, I think that what we can pat their backs for mm. is the fact that at least they could go to the <laughs> end of the game. You know, sometimes you are just praying that the final whistle will go and then you just go and sit down. Yeah, but yeah, you yeah. have to fight to the it, end. Yeah. I, I, they did that. It's okay. It, it was really tough. Really, Ouch. really tough for the Norwegians. After the game, they were asked what happened. All the players, they couldn't explain what was going on because they knew they had prepared. They knew they had, they thought they had put pressure on England. They didn't know that <laughs> England they were, were putting ready. pressure on yeah, themselves. They put pressure on them, but that, that's the story. So yeah, the other game, Austria beat Northern Ireland uh, two zero. So the Austrians are also they've also qualified, I think, from their group as well. Mm. So that's that's the lowdown from the women's race. It's still happening in England, and we'll try and bring you updates um, mm. on a daily as and when we, we can do that. Hey.